Okay, modernizing classic dishes really interests me because it's not just about cooking, it's about actually concept, you know? So what I've thought about doing is modernizing a kiwi roast of lamb. I've got really lovely Silver Fern Farm lamb rumps here. They've had the cap of fat taken off. And I'm using those because they're a nice dense piece of meat. They're not the tenderest part of the lamb, but they have a really lovely flavor. And they're like a little roast because you can just brown them, whack them in the oven and roast them. And it's like the roast you have when there's maybe only two of you or three of you or four of you and you don't want to do a, you don't want to wrangle a great big leg of lamb in and out of the oven. So I really like this cut of lamb. But first of all, I'm going to do the vegetables. I'm going to use a couple of vegetables that my mother or my grandmother would probably recognize. But the other one I'm going to use is eggplant. These are all going to roast together, these vegetables, so I want some rather larger pieces of eggplant than the other things I'm going to be using, because this is going to cook faster than, for instance, the carrots and the kumra, which are the other two vegetables I'm, I'm going to use. Do you need to salt the eggplant? No, you don't need to salt the eggplant to get rid of the bitterness, which is what traditionally you salted the eggplant for. You don't need to do that now because they've phased out the bitter varieties and we just get eggplants which don't require that. So, meticulously do these, you know. <laughs> and actually, yeah, Verena, jump up here and peel these carrots for me. While that's going on, I'll chop up some kumra. I love kumra. And kumra, it's sweet. It, it goes with these with spices. Lamb, kumra, silver beet. What a kiwi combination that is. I kind of know a little bit about Coomera, well, history of it, because I had to do a um, presentation at the Oxford Symposium of Food and Cooking, which was really good. And I wrote it, and the subject was vegetables, so I wrote, like, why a Coomera is so important to New Zealanders. Have you ever heard anyone in New Zealand call it a sweet potato? No, we call it Coomera, don't we? The Maori name. Anyway, I wrote this thing, which was 5,000 word academic paper on Coomera. <laughs> I know, I really have to get out more. Um, but yes, I wrote that and I called it Sweet Airs, which I thought was quite a good name. Yeah. Cut, take the ends off, yep. split it down the and middle, then it, and yep. then go across here. Okay, so I'm just chopping up. This is a purple skinned kumra. It's my favourite, it's what I was brought up with. It's the driest, the fluffiest one, and I reckon it's the sweetest one. And when you slow cook kumra, that's when you turn the sugars, the natural sugars in that really come out. And you, it's the slow cooking that does it. Excellent. Throw it in here. Cool. Excellent. Take a seat. Got about four cloves of garlic. Just run your knife over them a couple of times. You don't have to finely chop them because they're going to take about 45 minutes to cook with these vegetables. I'm going to put something very salty in here later, so don't go mad with the salt just yet. And I want about a couple of black olives. I like cooking olives. They get a really lovely mellow flavor when you cook them. Lovely New Zealand olive oil. So some of that over the top. Don't be mean with it. And then just stir all of these things up. And now that can go into the oven. 200 degrees, 45 minutes to an hour. The next thing I'm going to do is sort out the lamb. What I want to do is I want these to be spiced, so I'm going to put some spices on them. So a small dry frying pan, no oil, anything like that. And I want to toast some cumin seeds over high heat to start with. You can turn it down in a minute. The other things I want in here are some chili flakes and about a teaspoon of smoked paprika, if you can get the lovely Spanish sweet smoked paprika. Fantastic. It, it, I really love it. it. It's like an instant barbecue flavour because of the smokiness. Right, I think that'll do. So I should really let these they cool down, but so we'll just give those a bit of a stir up. And then I'm going to put about four tablespoons of oil in there as well. So New Zealand olive oil, one, two, three, Four tablespoons of oil, which is 60 mils, which I'm sure that is. Give it a bit of a stir up. I'm going to use four of these lamb rumps and this mixture here, which is the cumin seeds, chili flakes, paprika and olive oil. And I also want some garlic in there. Squash those up. Anyone got one of these mortar and pestles at home? Mm -hmm. They're really fantastic things. Don't buy a small one. Buy the biggest one you can buy, because you can put a small amount into a large thing, but you can't put a large amount into a small thing. I think they're fantastic. 
This this is heavy, it's granite, so it just about does all the work. You don't have to sort of pound and pound away. It'll just about do the work for by for by yourself, simply by lifting it and letting it fall. They are very good. They're great when you need to crush garlic quickly or whatever. I just wash mine out with hot soapy water and give it a good rinse. They're fantastic. A little bit of salt in there. Right. Stir it up and then just tip it over the lamb. You can do this the day before if you want to. And just smear the spice mix all over the lamb. Turn it all over so that it all gets coated. And as I say, you could leave that, you could do that day before, overnight if you want to. Fantastic, just, just that part of this recipe on the barbecue. Really nice. Now, Casey, you're on. Can you do me a favor, please? Can you, I just want these cherry tomatoes halved, all right? I'm gonna put couscous, preserved lemons, crumbled feta, and these tomatoes in those hot vegetables. I'm gonna turn it all through those vegetables later. But Sounds not, good. You know, won't do it yet. So that's why I'm asking Casey to do this. I'll get you to crumble that too yep. into pieces, not too small, just, just sort of squash it and go like that. Yep. I might as well just keep you working. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's gonna dice up some preserved lemon. And all the, these three things are, are, are gonna go into those vegetables when they come out, along with this couscous. Now, I've cooked some of the very large pearl couscous here. It's called Mograbia couscous, probably the biggest couscous you can get. What's couscous anyway? What's it made of? Anyone know? Pasta. It's a pasta, yeah. You know that tiny little couscous that, that is a t actually traditional Tunisian couscous? That's actually just like little tiny bits of pasta. That, you know, it's made out of semolina flour and water. So this has just been cooked exactly like pasta. Lots of water and cooked until it's al dente. There's something else that goes into pasta. What should the water taste like? The sea. The sea. You, yeah. Good on you. Yeah. Okay. So what am I doing? How many am I doing? In well, these aren't very big preserved lemons. It's still a whole one. We just want the peel, so just whip the inside out and then just finely dice it. Okay, cool. Yep. Excellent. That's Mr. Burns would say. <laughs> so that's the preserved lemon, finely diced. Casey's whipped the membranes and the flesh out of the middle because that's very salty. I'll give you a bowl to put that in, Casey, thank you. So I've got cus cooked couscous, which I'm going to stir through the hot vegetables. It'll just warm up, it'll be fine. I've got halved cherry tomatoes, crumbled cow's milk feta, and thank you very much. No Take a well-deserved seat, thank you. And some diced preserved lemon peel. I think these are, vegetables are ready. They're quite well done, indeed. I've got some cooked couscous, about a half a cup of cooked couscous. That's half a cup when it cooks up, it expands, obviously. About 100 grams of crumbled feta. Some tomatoes, which will, with the heat of this, they'll sort of start to soften a wee bit, but they won't cook, which is good. And reserved lemon. Just stir all that up, like that. And this is ready for the lamb when that's ready. So I can just keep this warm for now. Bad cooking is bad. <laughs> yes. What's happening? Oh, well, we're, wait, we're waiting for you. Really? Well, why don't you just go in the pantry and get yourself something else to do instead of standing around <laughs> chit-chatting? No? You go back and run it's your fun. own kitchen. We're going to have a look at the slam in the oven, see where we're going with that. How will I tell if it's cooked? Put some in it. I know how to tell if it's Feel. cooked. Yeah, I'm just pressing it. If it's, if it's really soft, it's raw. Yeah. No. If it's bouncy, the bouncier it gets, the more cooked it is. See, I'm thinking that by the time I've made a sauce in here and this is rested, that that will be cooked rather nicely. So I'm going to put it on a plate and I'm going to put a piece of tin foil over it. With the tin foil over the meat, is that not continuing the cooking process? Uh, it's not that hot. It, not? it won't cook. And look, I haven't got it. It's, it's just covering okay. it up. Yeah. yeah. Here's the pan, it's looking pretty grubby, which is, I don't mind, it's quite good. Just tip the fat out. Just get rid of anything that's really burnt. Yep, that's fine. Goes back on the heat. And I've got white wine here. A luxury to be cooking with this, but hey. And some concentrated beef stock. 
you want to make a quick pan sauce, it's deglazed with white wine, usually add some sort of stock, reduce it so it's a little bit sticky, that's all I'm doing. All right, about 150 of white wine, bring it to the boil, give it a scrape with a wooden spoon, not a metal spoon, just so that you dislodge anything stuck to the pan. Give it a good stir up. I'm smelling this, and all I can smell is raw wine. Horrible, mm. really foul. You've got to cook it. Which is why, of course, there's people that say, I don't drink, I couldn't possibly use this. I can't use wine in cooking because I don't drink. Well, you can, because there's no alcohol. It's all evaporated. Let it cook out. And that's changed completely. Before, it was like I brought some wine to the boil and was, you know, sniffed it in. It was actually really unpleasant. Now, though, now I smell it, it's quite different. Yeah, it's good. And then in with some concentrated beef stock. And really all you have to do is now just pay attention until that reduces down again, gets a little bit sticky, slightly syrupy, which is what I'm after. Now, you can have a look at your lamb, and you generally do get a bit of seepage of juices, so you don't waste that. You tip that into the sauce. The other thing I want is some lemon wedges. So this is really lemon wedges with your roast. I mean, this is nothing like my mother would have ever served. But essentially, what I'm doing is a roast. Really, it's roast meat, gravy, and vegetables. I just, I just messed with it, that's all. See the sauce is this lovely sort of unctuous. The only other thing I want is just a small, like a tablespoon of butter just to finish this sauce. It's gonna just slightly thicken it and it's gonna shine it right up really nicely. So I've got some Lewis Road creamy butter here. So you see the difference in the, how shiny that is now? And of course the butter makes it richer, it's like adding cream without making it all milky. I'm just not very happy with those little black bits. Let's go up to a sieve. Well, I just think I'll get a nicer looking product. And now I'm ready to put the dish together. So this is the roasted vegetables, the kuma, the eggplant, the carrots, mixed with cooked couscous, preserved lemon, and crumbled feta. I'm just gonna put a line of sliced lamb down one side. See that? It's pink and juicy, but it's cooked. Technically medium, which is what I like. Get my jus. We're just gonna tip that over the top. And here comes the mint sauce. Lemon wedges and mint leaves. Nice. So there we go, roasted lamb rump with vegetables and couscous. That's me messing with the traditional kiwi roast lamb.